Scholars of Swift, your Swift skills are making my head spin, so let's get swirling. We're going to create a swirling activity indicator. This is an object called the UI Activity Indicator View. We'll set one up. We'll show you some of the attributes that can be configured. We'll turn it on. We'll turn it off. I'm running this one here without turning it off so you can see the swirls. It's an easy skill to add and a very useful one, so let's go. Setting up an activity indicator that looks like this, although it will animate, is quite easy. The steps are very repeatable. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare an object of type UI Activity activity indicator view. We'll do that as a class wide property. Then we're going to set up a function called setup activity indicator. You could call it anything, but this is a good name. And we're going to set a bunch of the properties in the activity indicator view. Feel free to explore the properties and change these on your own. Use some of the other ones. But what we'll do here is we'll set the center of the activity indicator. We will set it so that it hides when stopped. So when the animation stops, we will hide it from the screen. We'll set it up so that it's in the large style, which isn't that big, but it will be visible. We'll set the activity indicator color to red, and then we'll add it as a sub view of our main view on our view controller. Now we wanna make sure that we call this someplace near the start of our code. View did load is a good place. You just wanna make sure that you call this to set things up before you actually use the activity indicator. Then when we need to use the activity indicator just before we want it to display, we'll call these two lines here to start the animating. The second line here will disable user interaction, which means the user can't click and do things on the user interface. That all will be blocked. But then when we're done with the task at hand, we call these opposite two statements here, one which will stop the animation and the other which will re-enable user interaction. So let's put this in our catch em all app. So in list view controller.swift, let's go ahead and declare and initialize that activity indicator with var activity indicator equals UI activity indicator view, open and close parens. Then let's write our setup function. We'll say func setup activity indicator, open and close parens, open and close curlies. Then inside we'll set four attributes and add it to the sub view. So we'll say activity indicator dot center equals self dot view dot center. That centers it right in the view controller in the main view. Activity indicator dot hides when stop should equal true. That makes sure we won't see it when it stops animating activity indicator dot style equals dot large. That's the iOS predefined large style, which admittedly isn't at large. Activity indicator dot color will equal UI color dot red. And then we'll add it to the sub view with view dot add sub view and in parens activity indicator. Now, whenever I want to use this, I'm going to call two lines and I'm going to do this just before the call to creatures dot get data. That's going to start the activity indicator. So I'm going to say activity indicator dot start animating code completion adds the parens. And underneath that, I'm going to say self.view.isUserInteraction enabled, and I'll set that equal to false. Then when I know my task is over, and in the case of loading data, I know that that's going to be the case when I'm inside of my get data curlies here. So inside of dispatchQ.main.async, and I want to do it in there because the activity indicator is part of the user interface, so it's got to execute on the main thread. I'll say activity indicator dot stop animating, open and close parens, and then self.view.isUserInteraction enabled equals true. Then I'm going to highlight these two setup lines just before I call creatures.getData. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them in just before my other two calls to creatures.getData. Now for my recursive function, I'm actually not going to call it inside of the function. I'm going to call it just before I call load all. So I'll put these two lines as the first two lines of load all button pressed. Then down here in cell for row at, just after I have my compound if statement, I'll paste those in before the call to creatures.getData. Then let's zoomity zoom zoom back up to grab the last two lines that we need to add. And whoops, it looks like I needed to add a self in front of activity indicator. So I'll add that first and then I'll copy these two lines. Then down in load all, I want to shut off my activity indicator in the else clause here. So just after I have this print statement here that says all done, I'll paste in these two lines and I'll head back down to self for row at and I'll paste them in just after I reload my table view. And you know what? I tried to run this and I got the purple crash. And the reason for that might not be initially clear, but inside of load all, because this is recursive, by the time I hit this else statement, I'm actually still inside of technically the completion handler for get data. Now that's on a background thread. It's not on the main thread. Now it was pretty easy to diagnose because the little purple error happened right on the line where I needed to push things back on the main queue. So right here after the else statement, I'm just going to say dispatch queue.main.async. I'm going to cut out these three lines. The print statement actually doesn't need to go in there, but it's not going to hurt. Paste them in. Whoops. And now creatures.creatures array is instead of a closure. So I got to put a self in front of that. And I forgot one more thing. I've got to call our setup activity indicator in view did load before we start to use the activity indicator. So I'm just going to copy the function name. And just after my table view data source and delegate calls, I'm going to paste that in, make sure it's got parens afterward. And now we're ready to build and run.
No errors, looking good, hammer time. Now get ready to watch this. My activity indicator will swirl only for the briefest of moments. I have a really fast internet connection. I actually tried using Apple's network conditioning tool. They have something that can simulate a slower network, but that didn't seem to work. I also want to point out something. In the simulator under debug, there's an option for slow animations. If you select this, the animations on your iOS device will slow down. Make sure that you set it back or your simulator will run really slowly. But this isn't really going to help us here because what we want to do is slow down the network network access so we can see the little swirly but no big deal we'll get a fast swirl here goes so just look closely right in the center of the simulator here we go get ready to press load all and look at that the briefest of red swirls but we indeed have an activity indicator working congratulations swifter another skill arrow in your swifty quiver all indications are that your activities in swift studying are paying off keep at it